So Simic Atlantis Energy is a diversified renewable energy generation company. Uh, the history uh, very much uh, originates from marine power, tidal energy. Um, but these days we're into all forms of renewable generation, waste to energy, pump storage, hydro, uh, and of course tidal energy. You're perhaps best known for your Maygem project in the Pentland Firth, which is currently the largest tidal stream project in the world, I believe. So this is correct. So the Maygen project uh, very much uh, is the, the world's largest operational tidal power project. Uh, presently, there is six megawatts of installed capacity, which means there are four turbines, which look very similar to an underwater windmill currently located on the seabed. When fully built out, we'll have 261 of those turbines uh, and they'll be generating very predictable power, which you don't see and you don't hear, and it should be able to power around about 250,000 homes. Is Atlantis involved in any other projects at this time? Absolutely. I mean, at Atlantis, we like to think of ourselves as a, as a world-leading developer, and we have a truly global remit. So we're presently interested in developing uh, in France. We have substantial interest in Asian markets, such as South Korea and Japan. We're actively investigating Australia, and of course, North America is an obvious place for us to develop as well. I presume the decision of Naval Energy to pull out of the tidal energy business provided Atlantis with the perfect opportunity to break into the French market. Absolutely. Um, it is very much an opportunity for us to now uh, potentially replace them as both developers and equipment suppliers. So um, certainly their decision has now opened up multiple opportunities uh, which we hope to capitalise on. You've clearly got the technology. What about the financial resources to make all these things happen? So uh, around about June this year, we completed quite a large transaction. It was a reverse takeover um, where we welcomed the Cymec Energy Group as a 49.99% shareholder in our new enlarged group. Now, Cymec Energy uh, is one of the companies that are owned by the broader GFG Alliance, uh, which is a multi-billion pound uh, industrial conglomerate. Um, <clears throat> primarily, uh, its businesses are in steel and aluminium, but it's diversified heavily now into uh, the energy sector and the broader commodity sector. So we now have very strong financial backing in order to go forth uh, and start uh, delivering on all of the potential projects that we have in our pipeline. Tell me about your joint venture with La Région Normandie. So this is uh, a groundbreaking agreement. Um, this is, to our knowledge, the first time uh, that a, a local or regional government has actually sought to form a, a joint venture directly with uh, the private sector for the exploitation of tidal power. So we'll be forming a, a new company, uh, which we, we look to call uh, Normandy Hydro. Uh, that company will be partially owned by Atlantis and of course also owned by the region itself, Region Normandy. Uh, we will then be using their resources, their local resources and their local know-how in order to seek to uh, gain possession of the required consents, application permits. Um, and then they'll of course be relying on us to provide technology and, de and delivery and development know-how. Uh, combine those two and we think this is going to be a very powerful force in tidal power development in France. What are your plans for exploiting tidal energy on the French side of the Rade Blanchard? So through the formation of this joint venture, um, we are looking to build one of the largest, if not the largest, tidal array in Europe. Uh, whilst it would be obviously developed and delivered in stages, our aspiration is to, is to try and deliver up to one gigawatt. Uh, so that's 1,000 megawatts uh, of installed tidal capacity on the French side. Now this of course won't happen uh, straight away and it will need to be developed in stages. And so we plan a, an initial pilot farm, which we would expect to be between eight to 10 megawatts, uh, and predicated on the success of that, we would then grow to 500, and from 500 to 1,000 megawatts of installed capacity. Uh, do you have any plans to develop tidal energy in the waters around Alderney, now that the states of Alderney have revoked Alderney Renewable Energy's license? We would absolutely be delighted if we were afforded the opportunity to enter into commercial negotiations uh, with uh, the relevant commissioners uh, and the states of Alderney, because it is sitting on one of the uh, most untapped resources in the world. Where, where we are developing in France, uh, it, is a, it is obviously a continuous body of water, um, all the way from the coast of Normandy right the way through to, uh, to the island of Alderney. It makes absolute sense if we are developing such a large project in France to use the economies of scale on that activity to then seek to exploit the wonderful resource, that consistent resource, 
that uh, is obviously present around the waters uh, in Albany. So I'll be very clear that we obviously haven't started commercial negotiations, but if we were afforded the opportunity, we would be delighted to commence those straight away. I'm sure you're aware of the controversy over the FabLink and tidal energy in Alderney. What makes you believe that you'll be more successful in terms of winning over public opinion amongst islanders? I think there are two very important points. Um, first and foremost, uh, this needs to be, the, the, the relationship that is formed needs to be with the local community first and foremost. They need to understand, uh, A, what we're doing, uh, B, uh, they need to see whatever <clears throat> we can deliver in terms uh, of uh, the, the, the financial benefits uh, to, to such a project to the, to the local community. But more importantly, this needs to be a project which in many respects is owned by the community. Uh, and I think that we have a very successful track record at working with local communities in order to deliver uh, these very exciting but very difficult projects. I think item number two, we have a track record. We can point to successful development and more, more, more than just the installed capacity, uh, we can point to where local and regional communities have uh, experienced direct economic benefit uh, from the development of tidal power. I think if we combine those two and deliver it in a very sensible and a very uh, uh, collected approach, uh, we should garner support. One of the most contentious issues uh, over tidal energy in Alderney has been the FabLink. Uh, are you going to need a converter station if you ever do any uh, development in the waters around Alderney? No, it's a very, very important distinction. Um, <clears throat> so Atlantis turbines, and you will see this at the major project in Scotland, are all connected subsea. So there is no requirement for a large onshore or offshore transformer platform. So, <clears throat> in fact, one of the most difficult aspects of trying to market tidal power is that you can't see the turbines nor can you hear them. Uh, so from that perspective you won't see any onshore or offshore transformer platforms uh, and of course we have the wonderful capability now with the developments of HVDC technology to move the power either to the French side or to the UK side with very very limited loss. You'll never see those cables. That's brilliant. Finally, in what ways is your turbine system uh, different to that of Open Hydro? <clears throat> so the Atlantis system is very much like all the other turbines that you now see available in the market. They look like large underwater windmills. And I guess we benefit from the fact that uh, we are taking a lot of the technology that has been already developed over many, many years in the offshore wind industry and we're marinising it. So. The tidal turbines that we use are very much the marriage of the offshore oil and gas technology, which again is very, very mature, and offshore wind. Combine those two, it's relatively low risk, uh, and of course we've been able to, to go through 10 years of research and development, uh, manifesting itself obviously in the successful delivery of Majin. Tim Cornelius, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, thank you.